G'day welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today I want to look at something very important. It's absolutely critical to any fixed wing model and it's just the issue of control horns and placement and geometry for these things. Now in the olden days when I was young and now we had to carve our models out of solid stone and um, hoist them aloft with the aid of a dinosaur, we had to get our geometry absolutely perfect or our models just didn't fly very well. Now, these days of course a lot of stuff comes from China, it's already laid out and everything should be honky-dory, but I've noticed increasingly a number of people just don't seem to understand how control linkage geometry works and they put their horns in the wrong place or they put things on the wrong angle and you know, just it just doesn't work out very well for them. Notice this particularly with the build of the Shadow S800 that I saw a couple of other build videos on YouTube and the control horns were in exactly the wrong places. I'm going to show you why it's important to have the control horns in the right place. And what I've got here, thanks to the aid of the people down there at Damper Workshops, which is a little outfit just down the road from Wetter Workshops, not quite so wet, um, I have the latest in computer-aided CGI technology here. So what we have here is a servo with a servo arm, as you can see. That servo arm is free to rotate. See that? Woohoo! Um, on this side I have a control surface with a horn. And this is pretty much optimum geometry here now, just put that in the middle. Optimum geometry. Basically both horns are vertical and the linkage is straight. Really good. So what happens here is I'm going to move this servo horn to two predetermined places I've marked here. And I'm going to mark where the where this ends up down here. So we put a little mark there. I'm going to move it back the other direction, the same amount. If we can get it to stay, there we go. And I put a little mark here. And you can see the angle is pretty much the same. This control surface tracks the movement of my servo arm very, very closely. It's a very linear response. And that's great because it means that if I give you know, so, so much upstick movement, I'll get so much elevator movement. If I give so much downstick, it'll give so much down elevator. It's really good. That's the way control surfaces should work. And the things to notice in this setup are that the pivot point on the horn is directly above the hinge point, the point where the surface pivots when everything's neutral, right? So that's directly above there. And the servo arm is vertical. Because I'm going to show you now what happens when we change some of that geometry. So let me remove my control surface. And I'm just going to draw a little line to connect up these dots I've made here so we can see the angles more clearly. Here we go. It, it's a bit rough, but you get the idea. These graphics are fantastic. It's a shame I had to use a supercomputer to actually get this because it's costing me a fortune to rent all this technology just for this video. You can see, even angles, even angles. Super duper duper. Now, this is a mistake I noticed a lot of people make on flying wings. They put the horns too far away from the control pivot point. Let me just install this for you. Right, so now we have, as you can see, the pivot point on the control surface is way up here, but the hinge point is way back there. Now, I don't think I made a, I better get my pin out and make it, oops, as I say, this technology is a bit, it's a bit bodge, but ooh, one thing you're going to notice immediately is if you want to connect up the same linkage, we're going to have to have a big angle on there, which is not good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new control linkage for this because I forgot about the difference in length. Just a moment, please. Right, job done. So now we've got a longer linkage so that I can make this work. And I'm going to do now, I'm going to move this servo arm the same angles I moved it before. And you watch what happens to the control surface. Let's move it to this extreme first. Right, now, just draw that in. That seems to be about there. And I'm going to move it to the other extreme. It's not really an extreme, is it? It's just a, just a, uh, a point on the board. And I'm going to put this, mark this here. Right, now let me remove this so we can see what's happened here. Take that linkage out, remove our control surface. I'm going to put a dotted line for this. And I say this isn't extreme. I could have made this more extreme, but I just want to show what's going on here. Here's the dotted line for the other control surface. Remember, we moved the servo arm exactly the same amount in each case. Now, you can see that suddenly we've got more down than up for the same movement of our servo horn, we've ended up getting more up than, more down than up because we haven't got our control horn in the right place. It's not over the hinge line. And it doesn't look like much, but 
it can make quite a difference. It's because I also only used a small amount of movement here. If I'd increased the movement on our horn, then this differential would have been way greater. In fact, why don't we do that? I'm going to um, move it further again just to really show how much of a difference that makes. Get this in the right place. There we go. Move that back. Let's move this control horn, say, about to there. It's about as far as I can move it, actually. So you see how far we've got in terms of movement on that there? I'm going to move it back the other way to way past there. And we didn't get much more than... So that way gives us heaps. This way, we don't get so much. So there is a, quite a differential in throw because of our, because of our geom geometry there. So that's one form of bad geometry. I'm going to show you another now. Right, I've gone back to our good horn here, a good horn geometry, that's vertical. But because my push rod's too long, I've just tweaked my sub trim or played around with it to change the servo arm so that that is neutral. But now notice what happens. If I give this some up, we get very little movement. If I give it down though, whoa, we get it for the same amount of control horn movement, we get a lot of throw, not so much up here. So by doing this, we're again getting a non-linear response. We're getting not much up for that much movement, but a snot load of down for the same amount of movement. So that's why this has to be vertical and that hinge point has to be directly above, or the, the pivot point has to be directly above the hinge line. Right now I've gone to the other extreme here and I've had to move my servo arm this way because the push rod is too short and I've used the, the wonky geometry there. Let's just see what happens. Um, you can see actually it reaches a point where I actually run out of, it stops moving completely, but the other way, woohoo, look how much up I get. So if I combine two bits of bad geometry, really bad things happen. Really, really bad things happen. There's, uh, you know, th there's obviously, that's maybe, what's that, 45 degrees, and you get not even 45 degrees on the surface, but 45 degrees the other way, and oh, it reaches its limit. So that's why the basics of hinge geometry and controls linkage geometry are so important. And I, as I wish to thank Damp Workshops for, or Damper Workshops for providing this incredible test rig here made from foam board. And now if you've got any questions or comments, please ask them. If there's anything you'd like to add, please do so, because uh, it's important that we understand when you're buying these RTF or plug and fly models or ARF models from China that they're not always designed properly. And sometimes you can improve them by making sure simple things like the control geometry is good. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.